Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're doing an unboxing of 1846, The Race for the Midwest. This is the second printing from GMT Games. This one's designed by Tom Lehman, who you know as the designer of uh, many other wonderful, wonderful games. Uh, Race for the Galaxy and uh, uh, Suburbia and Subdivision. And so he's brought his, his talent to the 18xx series with GMT. Um, this is not, unfortunately, most of Tom Lehman's games do have solo compatibility. Uh, this one does not. Um, hopefully that means that it's something that will be rectified in the future. Um, but there are no plans for that. I'm just, that's just wishful thinking on my part. But some people, a lot of people do play this uh, uh, true solo, playing both sides, uh, two, two sided, two handed, three handed, uh, and, and find it quite enjoyable. So. That's probably what I'll, I'll be doing as well. This one is uh, obviously set in America, race for the Midwest from the uh, Eastern Seaboard. So let us open it up and see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, so while many do play this, as I mentioned, uh, you know, true solo playing all sides, GMT rates this as a one out of nine on their solo compatibility chart. However, it does it does rank a four out of nine on complexity, so it's a little less complex than um, 1848 Australia, one of their other entries in this in this series, but it's even more well, even less solo playable than 1848, which was a two out of nine. So if those scales are calibrated, then that's where we stand. Beautiful artwork on the front. I do like that art. It's by Kurt Miller. It's a thick box. So let's dig in and see what you get. So we start out with the second edition rules of play. It is a 24 page book. 24? Yep, 24 pages. GMT matte finish paper. As always, great printing. Starts out with the introduction. The rules aren't too th small. They are, however, um, um, the, the font's not too small. A lot of good white space, a lot of good graphics, so on and so forth. It does say, um, if you're familiar with 18xx games already, 1846 rules are summarized on page 19. Um, 1846 is one of many 18xx games, all inspired by Francis Tresham's 1829, uh, they vary, share many features, but vary in their details. Um, 1846 is a somewhat lengthy game, depending on your experience and your group's play style. Experience, risk players can finish in two to three hours, newer, more deliberate players let's should allow two hours more. Tips for faster play can be found on page 13. So now we get into some kind of dense, dense rules here. Uh, a lot of a lot of text, not a lot of graphics, not a lot of charts. Now we got some graphics on running routes. Goes into railroad, advancing the game phase, so on and so forth. So, and then the game will end in winning. Now there is a official two-player variant, which is interesting. While it's intended for three to five players, two-player variant can be downloaded from GMTGames.com. So you want to look at that. And then actually, actually the rules only go to. To 13 pages and then we've got a detailed example of play built in here as well going through all the whole series of the game so that's pretty cool historic notes actually take up a little bit as well and uh, then player notes it says 1846 is my third 18xx game well excuse me uh, he designed 2038 set in space and 1833 in Northeast, set in, or in, in New England. Any, I went with Northeast, but it's New England set in New England, so that's pretty cool. I did not know there was a space 18xx game, which would be a 20xx game. 18xx used to be my shirt size. All right, so then we've got some charts in the back, and a glossary, and an index, and then a there's what the map looks like. We'll see the big board in a minute. We now have a sheet of corporation markers, a round tracker, various corporations, where are they, uh, stations and track their stock market, what phase we're in, uh, and then some other private corporations here, what's up here. These are very thick, 
good quality. And then we've got our track hexes here. There are five, six sheets of these. Six sheets of track hexes tw uh, with uh, 20 per sheet. So there are obviously 120 track hexes. So they start with yellow and you work your way up from yellow to green, I believe, to russet, which is brown, but they call it russet. Oh, and then we've got we've got these silver ones too, which are higher. So I guess the silver is beyond russet. They are very thick, very sturdy, punch very cleanly. Um, kind of interesting that these, uh, I guess it's only on a few of these, actually go um, off the board. Your station markers are going to go off the board, but I guess if you're placing them next to another one, it's it's going to be there. But they normally go on this, so it's not enough where it's going to fall off, but it's interesting they couldn't get it all on there. So, put that one back in place. There we go. And then we've got this one. The big game board, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Really? And then we've got our money. We've got, and the money here is not paper money, it's, it's paper, but it's very thick card money. So it's not card stock, it's just shy of card stock. And you got your singles, twos. These are dollars, not pounds like some of the other games are. Depends on what country you're playing in. A lot of people like to replace these as I do with uh, poker chips because it's just easier to move through quickly than rifling through the cards. But we got five, we got tens, we got fifties, so we got twenties, and hundreds, and five hundreds. So the only thing that's really changed is that these are dollars versus pounds from other games in the series. And in this one, you get a bag of bags. To store your track tokens, track counters. And then we've got various cards. These are going to be your stock certificates. Uh, there's no need to open them. They're basically the same for each, uh, each of the companies. You have a president certificate, which is two shares of 20, and then eight more, giving you a total of 100% in a company. And each of the companies has an identical set. And then we'll see what these are. So. Got some player cards here that say choose these if you don't want to purchase a private company. It's interesting. There's five of those, one for each player. Priority deal marker. And then the private companies you can bid on at the beginning of the game. Lots of those. And then we got various trains that you use working your way up. And for instance, this train, the big four, this uh, will be phased out in the russet color and removed in the silver. And the, and, the, and the phases increase yellow, like I said, yellow, green, russet, and then obviously silver after that. So trains will stop being used. They only last so long. And then you, then you get to permanent trains. And then here's another set of stock stock cards. I go with those stock cards. And then last but not least, you get the companies. Baltimore and Ohio Railroad is a operating company that you would want to run. And you'll get a um, charter card for that company, which will let you store the money for that company, the trains that they own, your stations, so on and so forth. So we have Baltimore and Ohio. Chesapeake in Ohio, the Erie Railroad, the Grand Trunk Railway. And I will, I will note that they are, they are asymmetrical. So like this one has four, and this is how much its trains cost. This one has four, and uh, stations cost. That's how much its stations cost. This is four, this one only has three. This one has four. The Grand Trunk or Grand Funk? New York Central. And there's one more here, the Pennsylvania. No Reading Railroad. No B and O Railroad. And no 
I can't remember the fourth one. It's been so long since I've played the wonderful game of Monopoly. All right, so let's take a look at that uh, that game board. And it is a it's a relatively small board. It's only six panels, so it uh, you know folds up pretty easily there, and uh, uh, doesn't take up a lot of table space. Uh, we've got our stock market value track here, um, earnings per share, update each operating round. You got a earnings track. Your stock market is here, telling you how to, to, your, to manage your dividends, rules reference sheets here, um, your rules for the different phases, like I said, yellow, green, russet, and silver. And then this is your map where you're going to place those train, um, excuse me, those track hexes throughout. And interesting here is some of them already have uh, track laid on them. They start out with some track Erie and then these two companies start there. It's on Monica and you got these off-board areas that you can deliver to as well during certain phases. So that is pretty cool. Oh look at that. It's got a little automatic U-turn on there. So you put the track there it's got to go to that. It comes back into there. All right so that is the board that you're going to give it 1846. Let's do a quick recap of everything that you get in the box. All right, so if you pick up a copy of 1846, The Race from the Midwest by GMT Games, you're gonna get these, uh, the uh, stack of uh, company charters. You're gonna get the share cards, the train cards, and the private company cards, bag o bags, big stack of paper money for uh, doing all your wheeling and dealing. You're going to get that uh, that big, beautiful game board that we just looked at. And six sheets of track hexes. One sheet of company counters. And the 24-page rule book, of which about 14, 13 pages is actual rules, and the rest is extra material. And that is everything that comes in. 1846 Race from the Midwest. Second printing designed by Tom Lehman, put out by GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!